deeper than mere words can express. The reality of that love is more powerful than what can be contained in any sort of eloquent statements. So we open up to it. Say that you are trustworthy. You are the one who will never abuse the power and the presence and the grace that you come with us. Lord, today we want to say that we trust you. We trust that what you have for us is the best, even when we don't understand it. Pray around us, Lord, of protection from the enemy, that we never be receiving from the enemy uh, what we think is of you. We just pray your discernment upon us, Lord God, that we never be resisting from you what is of you, because it's new, because we've never seen it before, because it takes us outside of our comfort zone. Thank you that you are the one who paid the price, the one who not only died but then rose again, yes. so that we can rise with you. Thank you. That we can live in the reality that that uh, that even the grave could not hold you. So that no matter what has come against us, that it's not the final word. That your resurrection brings new life. Your spirit in us brings new life out of those ashes. So we worship you. And we say continue to have your purpose upon us so that we are growing into all that you want us to be, all that you want us to be about. Come, Lord Jesus, and bring your reign and your rule so that the kingdom of earth more and more is like the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name. in Ephesians again. We'll be continuing on through the book. We've already been a little bit to chapter 4, but I really want to be focusing in on the first 16 verses of, of uh, Ephesians 4. But before we do that, there's a couple of statements that I want you to be uh, thinking about with me. Do have those ready to go? Um, there's there's four statements, and I wonder which one of these statements you most identify with. Which one of these sort of expresses why you're here. Here's the first statement. Come with me to church, because I always feel better. Amen. Let's go on to the next one. Come with me to be like Jesus. Anybody like that one better? Not as good as the first one. Let's go on. Come with me to change the world. Better or moving off the mark? Getting done. Amen? Amen. What's the fourth one? Come with me to Jesus so he can change us and use us to change the world. Amen. Okay, Glenn, you cheated. You used more clauses than that. That's, that's right there. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's hard to contain all that God's about in the shortest of sound bites, okay? So give me a little grace here, right? Uh, so, so, so it is about that, uh, that, that Jesus is, is at the core. It's not just church. And it's not just about us feeling better. And it's not even about us being nicer. I was talking with somebody about, probably another pastor, about how, how sometimes it feels that sort of church is telling nice people how to be even nicer. And, and that's really missing the mark. We're, we're not just a civics class, you know. Um, but this is about Jesus. 
about the fact that Jesus is taking over this work. Uh, Pastor Caleb, you used the word about this, this uh, invasive force of Jesus. Um, and so he, he changes us. This part of us living as disciples is, is where this is rooted in, in our statements of loving God, loving people, living as disciples. That this living as a disciple is what he does in me, and therefore what he does through me as well. He makes me more like Jesus, but guess what Jesus is like? Jesus isn't one that takes it in. Jesus is one that's giving it out, right? So as we take on the nature and character of Jesus, not just taking on the fruit of the Spirit, of the Spirit of Jesus, but it's taking on that power, that equipping to be ministering to people around you as well. That's what we're talking about this morning, and that's what these, these uh, first verses in Ephesians chapter 4 talk about. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 through 3, where we were this past fall, has a lot of really neat stuff and it's a lot of feel-good stuff. It's talking about who we are in Christ and what the church is, and it's all these, these, uh, these uh, glorious themes, and it's easy to get the uh, amens and hallelujahs and yep, that's right, out of those passages. Now we get into chapter 4 and 5 and 6, and it says, this is how you have to live in order to really be part of that, in order to see the fulfillment of that, in order to really be, be, be seeing the church that really exists in this intent that the first few chapters of Ephesians call it to be. In verse 16, if we could just go to right away to verse 16, um, and, and then I'll put it in context because this is the, this is the, uh, the uh, ending statement that Jesus is the one that makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. Each part helps the other parts so that the part that I am in the body of Christ, what I'm doing in the body is not only impacting what I'm about, but it's making what you're about be more effective also. If you're doing your part in the body, it's not only having the intended impact on your part, but there's this symbiotic impact on the other person's part that's sitting beside you also. You get that concept? Yeah. That as the health is raised in what you're contributing in, it, it helps to raise the level of the whole. And that's why this is important. That each of us is plugging in, that each of us is filling our part, and that we're not just sort of saying, well, it seems pretty good around here, I think I'll just sort of hang on with the coattails and just kind of um, um, see what happens, see where it goes. We need your part, and God has a part for you, and many of you are stepping into it, and about the time that you get there and think you have it, then God says, and now will you take one more step, right? And, 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 and now we just go beyond that comfort zone one more time. Because I'm always asking for you to be extending that grace, that power of my presence in your life. Well, this body of Christ, once this body of Christ was encapsulated in one person whose name is Jesus. Jesus, here on this earth, lived on this earth for 33 years, fully God, fully human. And that is the, the cornerstone upon which who we are as Christians and what it means to be Christian is based on that fact. That, that the Son of God uh, steps across the chasm and enters into our existence and becomes one of us and does so not, not stopping being God, but laying aside the attributes and sort of all the privileges that come with that position. And he says, I'm going to live this life in the reality of human existence. I'm going to do it because my spirit, the spirit part of my human being, my spirit part is the spirit of God. And that spirit of God is going to be what leads me and leads in my mind and my will and my emotions that leads in my body, in my physical responses, in the words that I say, in the thoughts and, and uh, attitudes of my mind and heart, and that I'm going to do this from this perspective of being human. Now, for us, 
when we say that we are inviting Jesus into our lives, what we're saying is that we're bringing the spirit of Jesus connecting into our spirit. And so there's this DNA change that begins to occur. There's this laboratory experiment that's undertaken where the DNA of the spirit of Jesus mingles with the DNA of you and it becomes more and more surrendered and impacted by the spirit of Jesus, okay? So that then it depends how much that gets to shine out as to how much of an influence and, and uh, minister you are in this, in this world, whether you are taking your place as a soldier in this kingdom of God or not. Because if you're only responding on physical levels, or only responding on the soulish emotional levels, if you're letting your intellect be your God, then you're really not able to express and release this spirit of God part, Amen. which is the root and the heart of where he resides. You get this? So that as we're saying, lead me, spirit, as we're pressing down and saying, spirit of God, be the one that's not shutting down my emotions, but the one that is Lord of my emotions. That's the one that is Lord over my thinking. The one that is helping to increase the clarity of my intellect and my thought. So that the thoughts that I can think are not limited by my IQ. But that they can go on and be thought and glory in your name with all of your infinite wisdom and grace. Okay? Too deep? Track it with me? Alright. So here it is. That we then increasingly take on this nature and character of Jesus so that we can be his body in this earth. Thanks for practicing this with me in the car yesterday, parents. Okay, I was, I was practicing on you. So, he didn't jump out, so I'm giving it to all of you today. Okay? So, so, so here it is, that, that once upon a time, this body of Christ, we looked at it and said, we recognize the body of Christ, we call that body Jesus. Right? Then, this Jesus body went back to heaven, and still human body, by the way, uh, sits in the right hand of the throne of the Father, and sends his spirit, and then he says, these people that are welcoming my spirit into, my, in, into their lives, they are what? They're my body. They're my body. This body of Jesus, physically, in that one man named Jesus, no longer present. But the body of Christ is still present upon this earth. And the body of Christ that's present upon this earth is called church. The church. And as CCF, we are one little but significant part of that church that is the body of Christ on this earth. Now, if it's the body of Christ, and the body of Christ was once here in the form of the person of Jesus... Where do we get our clues of what the marching orders are for the body of Christ today? From the life of Jesus, which is recorded where? In the Bible, particularly in, in the Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John extrapolate what the body did, what this body of Christ named Jesus was about. And now you are called part of the body of Christ. <laughs> Probably a retired version of right? Probably a weak and frail version that shouldn't be expected to be doing at all the things that Jesus did. <clears throat> no! Say it louder. You ever said that? That's exactly right. Thank you, Jennifer. No! That's not right. This is the body of Christ. This is the vibrancy of the body of Christ. And this is to be expecting and seeing the works that Jesus did to be alive and working through us as the body. Now, to ward against any arrogance here, it doesn't say that Glenn is the body of Christ. And it doesn't say that any other one person is the body of Christ. So in order for me to be part of the body of Christ, I have to what? I have to plug in. I have to step into it. And I have to be finding that place 
and be equipped to be filling that spot so that I'm fulfilling the reason that God created me to be alongside of you, my brothers and sisters. So that together we become that offensive line that can hold back the attack and we can move forward the kingdom of God. Okay? There's all kinds of... I, I, I mean, if, if you allow me to, to say it in sort of this stark way, growth can happen in the body. Growth can happen quite quickly in the body. But then the doctor comes along and cuts it out. Because it's a tumor. Because it's not part of the design of the body. It's growth going wild. So when you say, I can do this by myself, the growth that you begin to produce becomes a tumor and actually sucks life out of the body, rather than adds life in to the vibrancy of the body. So when I'm a part of the body of Christ, functioning in the way that it's intended to function, my concern is not, am I the little finger getting noticed? Or not even, am I the tongue, the one that's speaking for the body getting noticed? The concern is, is my body healthy? I mean, when you're sick, it doesn't really matter what part of your body is sick, right? Your whole body doesn't feel that good, right? It went, I, I mean, to use my own personal experience, you know, my leg had a blood clot. It was painful. It wasn't like, oh, well, it's just the leg. It's my leg! <laughs> this could break off from there and go to other, and it's my body! You know? <laughs> and so, this is, this is us as a body, right? This is us in the body. This is all of us. And so, how's this, how's this body doing? How's the health going in this body? How's the growth happening? Is the body fulfilling the commission of doing the work that Jesus has for us to do? Because Jesus, in heaven, and in his spirit in our lives, is the head and we become the body. That means the thoughts, the orders, the plans, the coordination is coming from Him, and we are the ones that get to carry it out. We're not on the design side. We're on the implementation side of the design that Jesus brings. Let's read it in Paul's words here in Ephesians 4. Can we read it all together this morning? Just following along on the screen. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, Binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, who is over all and in all and living through all. However, He has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says, he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. 
This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of His body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly, as each part does its own special work, it helps the other. So the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So here's Jesus saying, you disciples, this is what I started in reclaiming this earth and again making it my kingdom. Jesus then goes back to earth and says, here disciples, you take it from here, and you keep passing it on to others as you keep going. No words. Here's my spirit to give you the power and the enablement for you to do it. I'm not letting you alone, but you're doing it with this empowerment of the Holy Spirit to live into you and out from you. What do I expect you to do? You were watching. You're paying attention. Just keep on doing it. Take care of the poor. Preach the good news. Bind up the wounds of the broken. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Proclaim that this is the year of the Lord's favor. Proclaim that all can come and become part of it. So Jesus, you want me to be doing that. You're giving me your job description. Could I just have the part where you get worksheets? <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way, right? You maybe could get the part where you go to the cross, you know? So that all of us become part of the serving, sacrificing good for the kingdom of God as it shows up in the lives of other people. And that's the basic attitude of what it means to be part of the body of Christ. Well, I say, that sounds costly, sacrificial, not the kind of life that really is about the right of my pursuit of happiness. Jesus says, yeah, that's right. You got it. The rights that are established in my declaration are that we get to live for the welfare of of what Jesus is about. Here's the one. You get this, these, you're just one part of this body. All of us fitting into our place are this body. Okay. So uh, I want, uh, if part of the body, I mean, on my team, I want uh, Billy Graham, T.G. Jakes, uh, Tony Evans, and on reserve, Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer. Okay? How's that? No, 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 no. Look around. This is our team. We're the two. Yeah. So the goal is to each be knowing our part. And for us to be sure that we're including all of the parts. Now this is what we've tended to do. We've tended to say, I, I, don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't really understand this. This can hurt people. There's a lot of power in it. It's a little scary. So Jesus knew how to handle this, but I don't. The early apostles probably did, but I don't. So we're just going to lay that aside. And uh, I don't know what other, I don't know. I, hammer looks pretty easy. Let's be hammers. Did you ever hear that phrase, if only tool you have the hammer, everything looks like a nail? (laughs) 
I mean, you can do a lot with a hammer and roll duct tape. I mean, I, I, I get that, but, but it's not the full toolkit, right? I mean, Nick, you know what all goes into a toolbox, right? I mean, and when you have the right tool, you can do a lot of stuff, right? So I'm just having this, this mental image, you know, of how we say, well, well, we be, because whatever the task is, we don't have the tool for it. We then make the mistake and say, therefore that tool must not be useful in the body of Christ. So if I'm putting a, a screw into a hole, I, I need the screwdriver, right? Does that mean that the hammer doesn't belong in my toolbox? Because maybe the next thing I'll need to do is a name, right? There are names. It's good to have them, right? It's good to have that in the toolbox, but it's not the whole toolbox. So here in verse 12, we can go there, uh, it's saying that there's, that this is how God's Spirit equips us as a body. There's these five themes that weave in. These five roles, or five expressions. Um, verse 11, sorry. Um, and, and they are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. God gave these to the church. Verse 12, their responsibility is to do it all, and the rest of us get to sit in the bleachers and watch and hope our chairs are packed, right? <laughs> oh no, their responsibility is to equip God's people so that the work is done by the body. This is the ultimate duh message this morning, isn't it? The body does the work of Jesus, and you're the body. We're the body, okay? Amen. We, and, and, but, but here it is, the apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are the ones that equip, the ones that call it forth, the ones that instill the skill and the modeling and the way that says, here's how this body goes forth in these various expressions. Now let me just say a word about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The apostles, we know about apostles from, from the twelve apostles of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But then there's the apostle Paul, and there's the apostle Junia, and Romans, and there's other apostles, and, and, and so uh, apostles keep on going. Apostle specifically means sent one. But they're ones that are seeing the horizons. They're ones that are seeing that there's more than what we're experiencing now, and that the kingdom of God has to be extended. Apostles are not just saying, let's bring people in here, but it's saying, let's go there. Let's go out there and take the kingdom of God there. In fact, let's even go to the Tibetan Buddhists in India, because they need the kingdom of God there. All right? The prophets. The prophets foretell and foretell revelation from God. They hear God's words and they speak it out. They enjoy spending time with God. The evangelists, ready to share the good news of Jesus, ready to bring others along in that process, enjoying discussing Jesus with non-believers. The pastors, the shepherds is the word, the ones who care and tend and want to belong and bring people into, into the fold. We've tended to give a lot of room for pastoral expression in our, in our North American church, and that's why we call the leaders the pastors, right? Tend and bring together that's one of these five natures that the body of Christ is to have. And the teachers, the ones who hold forth the truth of God's word and are excited about it. Um, this morning in worship, um, Pastor Caleb, when he, um, after the uh, Oh How I Love You song, he just spoke it. Did you catch? He was speaking prophetically at that point. He was speaking prophetically. This can be prophetic words, even though it doesn't start as the Lord God speaks to you today. You know, just like but 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 if you catch the conviction 
that was there. You catch the nature of the word. And if you walk with his brother, you know that that prophetic anointing comes from him. Now, we're not going to change his business card and say, Prophet Caleb. <laughs> Why did your mom laugh a lot this <laughs> So, but, but it is the grace and anointing of the Spirit of God that shows up. But it helped to equip us, right? But it was this word that says this love of God has got to get free. This is the truth. This is just, and it just sort of came out there like a fire hose. It was exactly what we needed. Now, how would a pastor have said that? A pastor would have said it as, oh my, why are you feeling bad? You hurt him? You know the love of God is there for you. You know, tell me about that. You got struggling? God. And, and, and is that wrong? No, we need that as a body. What is the apostle? Apostles like, brother, you're hurting? Let's minister to that. Let's get it healed. Because you're called to be a minister of the Lord Jesus. And he's got a place for you to be going in his kingdom. And when you're here with this hurt and agony, these attachments of Satan on your life, you can't be effective in the role of ministry that he wants you to play. So let's get you healed so that we can get you out there and get you going. Okay? What does the evangelist say? Do they know Jesus? I bet if they turn their life to Jesus, they won't have that problem. Yeah. And what does the teacher say? Could we turn to 1 John? It tells us a lot about the love of God. And love casts out fear. They're all experiencing the love of God. They're all calling it forth. They're all expressing it in the way that it needs to happen according to what it is. And so the thing is, is that because Jesus is the head, he's the one that calls it forth. Go CCF. We need to hear that word of the love of God in a prophetic way this morning. And we did. So thank you, Caleb, for bringing it through to us. Sometimes we do more on the pastoral side, other things like that. And so there it is, the body of Christ support. The responsibility is to equip God's people. Just about that. To do God's work. To build up the church, the body of Christ. And remember that work is the work of Jesus. Amen. To speak the good news. To bring healing. To proclaim that this is the kingdom of God coming forth. That this earth and this life belongs to the kingdom of God. And you're welcomed into it. Please come. So these fivefold is what equips us as a body. It's what calls it forth. It's what oozes out from those people. And we all become infected in it and become built up in that and we all become strong. The last thing is is that it doesn't happen passively. We all enter into it by practice, right? Just ask Coach Matt Matt back Got this gin, right? Just, I mean, I mean it's, Matt, can I come into your gym? I just want to, you know, sort of press about 300 pounds or something like that, right? Yeah. Don't laugh too hard at me, okay? <laughs> but he, he, he's like, how about why don't you try 10 in each hand? Work, and, and, and we'll work up, you know. Practice it, you know, okay? So here it is, guys. Let's practice this body life together as we enter into the city. So guys, you, uh, oh, can you join us here, Nick? Hey, you guys know Safe Haven's coming up. It's coming up. It's starting Sunday.